if a TikTok gets a good amount of views, posting that same TikTok multiple times is actually a best practice. And that's probably something that people will balk at and say, I don't know, like, what? I'm going to post this again? You know, like, I'm going to post the same thing. I mean, you don't post them back to back. You can post them like a month apart from each other. But to date, I've had TikToks that I've now posted like five to eight times over the course of a year with other TikToks in between. And those TikToks have all gone viral. And it's the same exact clip that I screen recorded and saved, right? It's crazy. You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Indopreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome to the Creative Juice Podcast. This is episode 208. I'm your host, Jack McCarthy, and with me is my co-host, Ed Isola, who is currently packing and getting ready to hit the road with his band, the 502s. Ed, how's the tour prep going, dude? Dude, I, I feel more prepared than ever. I've got everything packed. I've got my jackets ready to go. We're going up north, and uh, I'm not I'm mentally prepared for the cold weather, so all is well. I was just going to say, we're going to get to hang out. Ed and I are going to get to hang out in person for about the first time in three-ish years when you come through town. So I'm super stoked. Dude, I'm looking forward to it. Two days in DC. Unfortunately, uh, well, I was going to say there's no ale house around, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. We'll have to talk more on the show about the tour once you guys wrap it up and, and kind of give our listeners a, a bit of a recap. But I'm pumped to get into today's episode and kind of dive a bit deeper into some of the things that we've been talking about over the past few weeks. You know, we've been talking a lot about putting together awesome social content and being a content first creative or artist when it comes to your marketing as we kind of go into this new landscape of social media, of digital marketing, of, you know, the privacy first internet. But this episode is going to be a little bit of a different spin on that. And I I wanted us to touch on kind of the question of like, what do you do once you're there? Like, what do you do once you've got the insane, awesome video content that you need to be capturing and the types of performance videos that we so heavily are kind of recommending? What do you do? I wanted to talk about how to make the most out of that social content. Ned and I were kind of, we've been kicking this around quite a bit over the past few weeks, both just in terms of coming up with different ideas, but also talking to our clients about it at the agency at NDX. So I'm excited to kick this off. I think this is a really great topic because like you said, there's been so much focus and conversation around like, you gotta make great content, you gotta make great video content. And I think that that by itself can maybe be a little bit daunting, right? If it's like, oh, you gotta make a great video. It's like, okay, great, I finally do a great video. And then I think that the general mindset is that you have to continue to create great videos because it will exhaust over the course of like a week. I don't know, that, that's just a sense I get that like once the video's out, most indies think that it has a short lifespan. But I think this is so exciting because that's not true at all and there's so many different ways that we're gonna get into to take this video and stretch it over several months or even years when it comes to the advertising front of it. So yeah, I think it's just gonna be a great way for people to learn like, here's how you extend the content that you work so hard on so that you have stuff that's coming out and feeling fresh while you are working on more future content. Totally, yeah. And just to give a little bit of context for anyone who's new and might be listening for the first time, if you listen back to episode 205, we talk a lot about staying ahead of this changing creative curve online um, on social media and how to get your music out there in a way that attracts fans and what kind of videos you should be focused on creating, how to create performance videos that really like grab people by the shirt and drag them in and really capture their attention. So that's really the type of content that we're talking about needing to create, but then what to do with that once you have it, I think is a big question mark that a lot of artists struggle with. Certainly in a lot of conversations, you know, that I have uh, with artists and bands, the topic comes up of like, okay, but like, what do I do for Instagram? What do I do for Instagram stories? How do I put my content on reels? What do I do for TikTok? Where does YouTube and Facebook all come into play with this? Where do my live streams fit in? What do I do with all of this stuff? Once I've got a backlog of it, how do I make it do more than just one post for me or one ad? And that's kind of what we were thinking about touching on today. I agree with you that it can feel really daunting. It feels like there's a lot to do. Yeah, my hope with this episode is that we're gonna go through all those different placements you just listed and 
people will walk away from this with an understanding of like, okay, I have a new video. Let me go back to episode 208 and here's the rollout plan, right? At least from a, a high level understanding of like what goes where, because it does seem complicated, but I also will say that I pretty much use the exact same rollout plan at this point for all the videos that I do. And I recommend it for everybody at NDX too, because now I have an understanding of like, here's how I chop things up to fit different platforms. It takes me an hour. Now it's going all over the place. That's kind of my hope is that everybody can kind of have an understanding of the platforms and what works there and how to reuse and repurpose stuff easily. Definitely. Yeah. Well, so let's kick it off then. Like in a scenario or a situation where we're working with a client at the agency who comes to us with a badass performance music video, you know, something really well done that pulls people in that feels like it has kind of like a viral quality to it. For me, one of the first things that I do when the question of like, okay, like how do we roll this out across platforms and what are we going to do with it besides just you know, advertising it in one placement. The first thing that I really look to do is listening to the song and watching the video and trying to identify a few of the strongest or kind of climactic moments within that video. What would be the thing that if I started right at five seconds or right at 15 seconds, would a 30 second clip or a 15 second clip work? If I started at the chorus, if I started at the bridge, kind of identifying like what are the sections of the song and how do they serve the viewer in the context that, you know, if this was the only thing they were seeing, what would this do? Are the lyrics impactful? That's kind of one of the first things that I check out. Yeah, I mean, that's a great place to start is figuring out what's gonna go where. So I think like you said, lyrics are a great, great, great place to go as a starting place. Typically that's what I see work really well across a lot of platforms. Our lyrics are the things that are most engaging to people. And it's kind of interesting because I know we're gonna kind of backtrack a little bit on this, but looking into like reels and TikTok specifically, good lyrics on the screen kind of are starting to serve as the pattern interrupt versus like the video itself, I almost think. It's kind of interesting, but I mean, I think I think like first thing in my head is when somebody at NDX brings in a video, right? And says, hey, here's this great video, like you just said, what are we doing? Step one is to kind of look at what parts of the video are great. Like you said, looking at lyrics and then Two is kind of like, what platforms are we gonna put this on? And I think that's kind of maybe just like a helpful first thing real quick before we dive into like what parts are great to outline. It's like typical rollout strategy for me would say, okay, here's the video. This is all organic, right? This is not the advertising portion of it, but we're gonna put it on Facebook with a fan finder type headline. That means simple headline, not like thanks so much to so-and-so for filming, blah, blah, blah. Just gonna have a simple headline. Not heavy on calls to action. Yeah. Right. So it's like Facebook, simple headline, Instagram on my feed with the same simple headline. So Instagram stories, I will typically just then share the post that I've made onto my Instagram story. Just saying like, hey, new videos out. So people are seeing that. Instagram reels, we'll kind of get into, Instagram reels and TikTok are synonymous in my opinion, but that typically will be a shorter clip or multiple shorter clips. And then YouTube, I'll typically do like, depending on your YouTube channel, some kind of premiere countdown and then put the video up in its entirety on YouTube. So those are the, what, one, two, three, four, five, six places that I typically look to. And Twitter, but Twitter kind of caps you at two minutes. So I'll just do like a little compilation or first two minutes of the video kind of thing. I think that's a good starting point when thinking about the platforms and what you can do with them. Now, like that's just a boilerplate sort of starting point. How you roll those out could very heavily depend on like what kind of narrative you want to drive. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Like, I think we could go, <laughs> we could totally go on a deep dive on like narrative and how you build up for a release and what you do after the fact and how those videos can continue to serve you. But I think that's a really, really good starting point. Additionally, the creative that you pull from your sort of full video that you would use for TikTok for IG Reels, you also could use an in Instagram Stories, you know, um, for IG Stories ads, for example, you could kind of pull that and format them in a way that it feels like it's appropriate for that sort of placement. It might have a swipe up sort of graphic. But I think the important thing, and one important thing to mention there when it comes to taking full horizontal HD video and turning it into vertical is the framing of the sections that you identify, you know, making sure like 
yeah, I've got lyrics that I know are strong in this chorus or like this bridge is really gonna pull people in or you know, like the intro has a really specific sort of pattern interrupt that I wanna make sure people see in their feeds. I think something that's important here is making sure that when you try to splice it down to vertical video, do those elements still stay in frame or can you fit them into the frame? That's definitely really important to making a video that feels native to all these other places that you didn't you know, instinctually make it for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like that's a really good way to think about it because if you're looking at the six placements that I was just talking about, just as like a general awareness thing, Facebook feed, Instagram feed, YouTube, those are all just the full video. So there's really no editing at that point for you to post. So like you're saying, Jack, then the, the question is like, what are you looking at when it comes to reels? And that's honestly one of the trickiest things that I've seen when it comes to editing these videos. Not that I'm a master editor. I mean, I use Canva, right? But it's very hard if you have, not hard, but you, it takes a little patience if you have a horizontal video to make it full screen, right? Like it's, it's whatever the dimensions are, like 1080 by 920 or whatever. So typically what I'll do is I will go into Canva and I'll open up the Instagram Reels or TikTok template and then I'll upload my video and I will drag it into that predetermined size. And it's really important for Reels and TikTok that you have a full screen creative. So like Jack's saying, it can be a little bit tricky to find something where somebody's in frame. And now what you're really looking for when it comes to repurposing for those two platforms specifically, in my mind, is you're looking for somebody who's in center frame, the camera's on them. You don't want it to be cutting around to a bunch of random backgrounds or kind of moving a lot, moving to people. So you want somebody who's in the frame and you want it to start with a good lyric. So those are kind of the two things that I would recommend to look for. And that takes, you know, unfortunately, the only way to really get that is through trial and error of going into your video editor and hitting play on the video and letting it run, right? You're looking for a 15 second clip, but like it's gotta look good throughout. If you're not gonna film specifically for those platforms, which is something that probably comes later, you're just gonna have to kind of sort through your video and try to find something that looks good. And typically there's shots in there, right? It's not like people are generally taking the camera and like spinning it on an axis for the entire time. So you'll find shots, but it's just gonna be taking a little bit of time to find that because this is, in my opinion, the most important part of the process. Because like I said, Facebook feed, Instagram feed, YouTube, that's all really straightforward, right? You already have your video, it's edited, great. Reels and TikToks, really take your time with this and make sure it looks good and good lyrics, in frame, full screen. Those are the three kind of check marks that you want to keep in mind here. That's such a good point. And I think that kind of ties into something we talked about a couple of weeks ago in that I think personally, one of the hardest parts about shooting and creating great music video content for social is really choosing the song and its parts. I think that that's so like, critically important and also probably the most challenging thing in the world. Like a lot of artists get stuck on like, you know, it's just going to be a video for the single and like not a whole lot of thought into what that actually means and translates to for social. And that definitely plays into what you were talking about is like, once you get down to it and you're into editing mode and trying to figure out like, where does all this content go on social? If you didn't choose the right song with the right energy and the right parts and sections, then you're going to have a heck of a time trying to figure out how this all fits into what your online presence feels like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all a cohesive experience. You're exactly right. I agree on that. So once you've kind of got that laid out, the next thing that I like to do in this process is take a look at, well, for one, take a look at what you've been doing so far or up until this point on various placements or platforms, social platforms, various social placements or social platforms. Look to see what you've been doing up to this point. Maybe you're seasoned at using IG Reels at this point, or maybe you're seasoned on TikTok and you've got a sense of what sort of works for you. That's the first place that I would start when deciding like, what, it, what am I gonna do next once I've got like a few different content pieces that I can use out of this one piece of content. I mean, that's kind of like the name of the game here. Like what we're trying to get across is how you can use one piece of social content, 10 different ways. So what I would do is I would look to see like what's worked for you in the past. Have you used videos that have lyrics on screen? Have they had a certain type of font that you've used? Maybe you've used, you know, for example, on TikTok, the kind of narrated text to speech sort of effects. Maybe you've done that kind of thing and you found that that's worked well for you. So that's the first thing that I would do in kind of like researching on yourself. And then what I would do is I would look into 
what's happening with artists that are similar to you or artists that your fans follow and like? What kind of content are they doing? What is it looking like? What kind of effects are they using on the videos? Are they using effects at all? Are they posting these types of performance videos? Are they not? Are they splicing in things at the front and the back? What kind of hashtags are they using? This is the kind of research that I would start to do when deciding, okay, I've got these clips and I wanna figure out how to roll them out. These are the sorts of things that I would look at, both look you know, within yourself and your own marketing and then look outside of yourself at similar artists and also just the platform or the placement that you're thinking about as a whole. So look at, you know, what are some of the trends right now that are happening on Reels? What kind of fonts are people using? What kind of effects are they using? Are there any trending hashtags that you need to know about? All of those things are the types of stuff that I look at from an organic perspective. And then from there, that allows you to kind of spin out different types of content with this video. And this happens over time too. Ed, you and I can probably speak to this when it comes to the 502s. But for example, when we started running TikTok ads on your viral TikTok posts, one thing that we started to do was freshen up the creative, which was really just a clip of your fan finder for Magdalene or for just a little while and found different ways of spinning out new headlines on it. And so on TikTok, for example, and on Reels, headline that you might use in your post copy on or your ad copy on Facebook is more likely going to be the thing that you put on the video caption itself. So what we were doing then is spinning out different headlines that would go on the video. And then, you know, at that point you have five different kinds of video headlines that you can work with that then get edited onto these clips. And if you have different sections with different lyrics, you've got a plethora of options that you can work with. Yeah, it's really cool because that was something I was going to say was if you have a video that is, I don't know, what, three minutes, right? The typical video is probably three minutes long performance video. You want to be careful about what you're posting, like in the sense that you want to give it a lot of thought and find that good opening shot and find it with matching with a good lyric and be able to post that. But also it's a three minute video, right? So like you should be able to chop that up into, I don't know, eight to 10, 15 second videos would make sense, I think. Typically that's what I'll do and then I'll post them. And if one video doesn't work, like great, I will just leave it or I'll just on TikTok hide it as you can only see it for ads. If you were to log into my TikTok, you would see tons of posts that are grayed out because they're no longer visible on our profile. And so you don't lose anything. You're just posting, you're trying. And probably for most people listening here, the end goal is to find something that's working on these platforms for you and getting you some attention. So don't be precious about what you're posting. I mean, you wanna post good quality stuff, but like you shouldn't say, oh, I have a three minute video. I'm gonna get one clip from the video and post there. Down the road, what the end goal would be is that you have these eight to 10 clips from this video and you're kind of posting them and you're experimenting and seeing what's working. Hopefully one works really well for you. At that point you'd say, well, there's my clip, right? Like that's the winning clip in my head. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and make more content around this, whether I'm duetting it or I'm duetting people who have used my sound or I'm stitching it together with other viral trends, like that kind of stuff. But early on, don't be afraid to post multiple different creatives. And that in itself, you know, it's like, how do I turn one piece of content into 10? It's like that in itself is 10 pieces of content, right? And typically my streamline will be get the video, get it in Canva, trim up, these eight to 10 different 15 second clips for TikTok, go on to TikTok, do the editor, that kind of stuff. This is actually interesting. Uh, on the very last step on TikTok before you hit like post and make it public, on the top right, there is a preview thing where they'll show you your video on loop. Typically what I'll do after I have the video the way I like it is I'll do this preview, I'll let it loop, and then I will use the screen record function on my phone to screen record this. And what that's doing is it's getting me the TikTok without the watermark. So I'll screen record it for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, so that I have multiple passes through of this TikTok. I'll save the screen recording, I'll post the TikTok, and then I'll go into my camera roll. And this is kind of a little bit tangent, but thinking for like how we tie it into reels and stuff, I will go into my camera roll, I'll trim it up. So now I have the unwatermarked version of this video and then now here's your content, right? Because what we're talking about is you get your 10 videos from this, you're posting, you're kind of seeing what's working, what's not working. If something does work, 
now you can kind of go and, and take this unwatermarked video, you can stitch it together with other videos, you can post it again, you already have it with the language and the copy on it and stuff like that. And it's easy enough then to also always take this and go post it on uh, Twitter or go post it on Facebook or go post it on Instagram Reels. Like you can then take this unwatermarked thing and just post it everywhere. For sure, that's a really good point. I'm actually super glad you brought that up because I was gonna mention the same sort of thing is you know when you're cross posting, something that you wanna do, if you're going to try to be native about the content that you're creating is like on TikTok, you don't wanna have the TikTok watermark on your IG Reels video. Plenty of people do that. And there is evidence that it's actually algorithmically problematic and kind of detrimental to bring that over to Reels, which, you know, kind of is understandable. <laughs> but uh, in addition to the method that Ed mentioned, another tool that you can use to do that kind of thing, if you've got TikToks that you wanna pull out without the watermark, is you can use a tool called SnapTick, and we'll link to that in the show notes. It allows you to download your video straight out of TikTok without the watermark, which is pretty slick. It's another sort of helpful tool if you've got stuff previously posted up that you wanna use and, and you didn't have a chance to do what Ed was mentioning during the actual process of putting it together. I wanted to dive into something you mentioned about like stitching together your video and using that as a another method of spinning out different types of content, you know, based on stuff that's trending or just having front caps or end caps. I definitely think that that's another element that is super important because all of a sudden that gives you the ability to add new life to your video, especially if something pops off and goes viral and you want to try to keep using it. This is a way to kind of put something new in front of people using the same piece of content because you know, the front of it is a bit different or you're duetting it, for example. So I wanted to dive into that. What are your thoughts there, Ed? My thoughts here is, and I think you guys, as you're listening, can kind of tell that like the, how do I repurpose this video into a bunch of different things? A lot of this is taking place on TikTok, right? And then those TikToks are then being reposted to Instagram Reels. So like I said, a lot of this, how do I make more content? How do I make more strategy? A lot of it is doing your regular posting on the Facebook feed, Instagram feed, and YouTube, and then really taking this and diving in. So like Jack said, TikTok is a great place to come up with a lot of content. I think that there will be a negative stigma around this from a lot of people, a lot of artists specifically, but for myself and for several other artists that I'm, I'm personally aware of and we've worked with at NDX, if a TikTok gets a good amount of views, Posting that same TikTok multiple times is actually a best practice. And that's probably something that people will balk at and say, I don't know, like, what, I'm gonna post this again? You know, like, I'm gonna post the same thing. I mean, you don't post them back to back, you can post them like a month apart from each other. But to date, I've had TikToks that I've now posted like five to eight times over the course of a year with other TikToks in between and those TikToks have all gone viral and it's the same exact clip that I screen recorded and saved, right? It's crazy, I mean, it's insane, but if it's a good video, you should be doing that. So that's like step number one of how do I get more content? It's like, you just take the same clip and you post it on TikTok when you find something that's working. And I got more around that, but I'm sure Jack wants to maybe chime in there real quick. No, no, go ahead, <laughs> take the deep dive. So that's like number one, like here's how you get more content. And it's crazy. And, but what you'll see is if, if and, and all this asterisk mark is like, if you have a video that, you know, goes viral or goes semi-viral, you know, gets 100,000 views, whatever, that is a video that like you can keep posting. It has legs, yeah. Yeah, it has legs. And if the comments on the first post are really, really positive, then what you'll see as you post more is that those people will come back and chime in and be like, oh man, I love this song. And also TikTok's weird because like new people will get it. New people will continue to get it. It's not like this closed system where, oh, I posted it, it got a million views, therefore why would I post it again? Because one video we posted, million views, three months later posted again, another million views, and each time the streaming spiked really dramatically. And so to me that's saying like, oh, okay, well there's new people listening, right? And people were commenting, I can't believe I just heard this, that kind of thing. So number one there is like, if and when you kind of get your clips and you start posting and experimenting and you find something that works really well for you, save that video, post it again every four, five, six weeks with other stuff in between. Then number two is like, same thing when you find a video that's kind of working well. And this kind of circles back around the whole strategy here, which is like, make a great piece of content, 
keep coming up with clips from that content and posting them until something kind of catches. And something catching doesn't necessarily mean that he goes and gets 5 million views, 50,000 views, 30,000 views. If you see a huge spike on something like compared to what you normally do, that's working for you and you should be posting that clip and then starting to try to replicate it. You can duet things, right? It's very easy to duet and a great thing that I like to do there is if people are using your sound at all, like if you have a video that gets some views and somebody uses their sound, you can duet their video. And literally I, I've been doing this for the 502s and, and I did a personal challenge to myself to try to post once a day on TikTok. And at first that was very difficult. And I was like, what the heck am I gonna do? And I was like, oh, look at this. All these people are using this. I'm just gonna duet their videos. And those videos are now getting like, you know, sometimes you get 20,000 views. Yesterday one got 400,000 views. And I'm just posting, I'm, I'm duetting things because people seem to like that. So you can duet people's videos. You can respond to people's comments with videos, which is a really, really great way to kind of engage with people. A good example of that is that like, a, B, C, D, E, F, you and your mom, whatever that song is, you know, Gail. I love that song. So like that song, apparently I saw, of course I saw a TikTok on this, was originally a marketing ploy from somebody at her marketing company or something who left a comment on her song, uh, on one of her live videos and was like, you should write a, a breakup song around the alphabet. To which then that artist took the comment responded to the comment with a video of her playing this song and then all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh she wrote this great song off of a fan comment right like that turned out that wasn't the case but it got her a lot of attention i mean that song's huge now so being creative about how you respond to comments is a really really easy way to do it and i mean not that you need this but you could get your your friends or your fans right if you have any fan base on tiktok and there's a comment you respond to it. So you can do it, you can respond, and then something that takes a little bit more video editing, but not much, is stitching together with viral trends. So if you have a TikTok and there's a viral trend, easy enough to stitch it together. A great example of this is one that I did for 502s that I think we had posted Magdalene and we hadn't like had anything really, we hadn't been posting much, and I saw a viral trend of like some guy kind of laying, laying in his bed or something. It was like, this was the video that, you know, made me go viral or something. And so I took the first two seconds of this video, which had a couple hundred thousand likes and millions of views on it, and was talking specifically about a viral video. I took that, downloaded the video, and then I took the first two seconds of that, and I took our video, which had gone viral, I spliced them together, and I posted it and it got a million views. So don't be afraid to like piggyback onto stuff that's already going viral. I mean, TikTok does that at the end of the year too every year where it's like, what was your most viral video of 2021? Or, you know, they did that last year or, or those kind of things where sometimes they'll put prompts up. So all of this to me is, I look to TikTok for the content creation. Once the video is out, I then take it and I disperse it across other platforms. And I honestly think just the more time you spend on TikTok, the more aware you'll be of trends. Like you don't have to be doing dances. You won't see me doing any dances on TikTok for myself or recommending that. Like I keep it all original music oriented. I keep it all about our music and our tours and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't even really get behind the scenes, but it's really just like 502s, original music, feel good music, that's what we post on TikTok, right? So like, you just gotta kinda understand and, and go on there and learn and experiment on, on like what you want your voice to be and then just start engaging with content there. And I know that was a very long-winded deep dive, but it's info that I have accumulated over the last, I mean, that we've all accumulated, but like I, I go spend hours on TikTok every day because I like it, but it's info that I've accumulated and like little tips and tricks over the last year and a half, right, of just going, posting, hiding posts, seeing what's working, seeing what's not working. And it's stuff that like, like I said, I know it's a lot, but if you're looking to how do I repurpose my content and you have a great video, that's how. Like you make multiple clips, you post them, you interact until you find something that's working and then you just take step two, which is like all the things I just listed. And you guys have done that. And I've seen plenty of artists do this kind of thing where once your video has traction behind it or a video or multiple videos or a piece of content or multiple pieces of content once it has traction behind it then you can start to build upon that narrative you know this is something that i wanted to touch on kind of to close up the episode was 
not only can you make multiple pieces of content, but you can build up a narrative to first kind of build up to the release. For example, you can challenge your followers on social to get them to take action before you drop something or to get you to drop something. I see that often done on TikTok. Oftentimes the challenge is like, can we get this to X number of pre-saves or something? And, you know, we could argue the, uh, validity and benefit to doing pre-saves. Spoiler alert, there isn't. (laughs) But that doesn't matter. Uh, The idea of kind of challenging people to take the plunge with you and and kind of incentivize them to do something so that you drop your video, you drop your song. That's a cool way to kind of drive a narrative and get people excited. But after the fact, this applies too. Like you guys have done like the, as just a little while or Magdalene was growing off of its virality you were creating stitches of the video where it was you kind of like talking head, very selfie style, just being like, you guys did this and like showing the growth of the song. And that kind of excitement is something that I think works really well on social, especially on TikTok, I think on Reels as well, where it feels very human to human in a lot of ways. Like you were mentioning with like the comment replies and stuff like that and duets, like there's a there's kind of a human to human, person to person sort of element to these social platforms. And I think being able to do that is something that you can do more of with your video. And that allows you to stitch in something else, you know, something extra on the front end, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it is. I think that maybe the pushback to some of the stuff that we're saying here is like, well, yeah, this works for the 502s because they have like viral videos, right? But that wasn't always the case and we were still doing the same things like, but it's a process, right? So look at this holistically. We're like, our process was let's make videos and re and like, and even go back and take the videos that we've already done years ago. Let's trim that up into content that we can post and let's see what, what you know, what time let's, let's experiment with 7 AM and 7 PM and lunchtime. And like, let's just kind of see what works for us. That's probably where a lot of people listening are. It's like step one, like I have a video and I probably have past videos. Let me figure out what works and find something that really, really kind of pops off, so to speak. I mean, so we we were on the same trajectory, right? I'm giving you my point of view from two years down the road, a year and a half down the road. But if you're listening, it's like, well, how do I apply it? It's like you apply it by taking any videos that you've already made and any that you have coming creating that into content for TikTok and for your new stuff, then dispersing it to other platforms and going until you find something that works. And then you can come back and listen and go, okay, well, it works. So now what do I do? What do I do? And we've kind of outlined that here for you guys. The other thing too, to Jack's point about like, hey, let's, you, you can challenge people, right? The thing that I have found crazy is, is like those challenge of like, hey, go pre-save the song. That's so weird to me because I mean, what I've seen in terms of translation from TikTok to streaming, people want it like now, you know, and they don't really, if it's not out, it's probably, there's, you see a lot of that, like, hey, once I get this many pre-saves, let's do it, like I'll release it or my label will let me release it. I would urge you if you have something that gets good traction to just don't rush it, but put the song out, right? Like just put the song out because what people are gonna do on TikTok is if something's really getting traction, they're gonna go listen to it. And when they listen to it, they're going to add it to their playlist. They're gonna share it around. It's gonna get streams, like that kind of thing versus a pre-save where it's gonna die. That's just a thought. I mean, like, you know, we dropped our song, essentially Magdalene went viral and then we ripped the audio from the YouTube, passed it through like that (sighs) online. Dude, I forgot about that. I forgot <laughs> about that. I forgot about our conversation. We literally had a conversation where you were like, dude, this is going viral on TikTok. Should we just drop it? Like, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, I think you should. <laughs> and that's the thing where it's like, okay, look, roll of the dice, right? But that's my advice. If anybody gets to the point where, oh, oh crap, something's popping off. Something's going really well now. What do I do with this song? If the song is done, or you have a live version of it. Like literally we were planning to put Magdalene out in like October of 2021. And the video that we just posted because we had filmed it to support our album launch went viral in October of 2020. And the studio version wasn't done, but the audio from the live version was passable. It was good, it was fine. So yeah, we, we took it. I think maybe we had the stems we passed it through, we did a quick mix ourselves. We passed it through like the, the online mastering thing. I can't remember what's called, Lander or something like that. Lander, yeah, Lander. And it was like, 
you know, we were on the phone at like 2 a.m. making cover art and it was up within a day and a half of through DistroKid of, of the song going viral. And that in itself was a big push for us. So that's kind of just a observation, but. No, that's a great tale. Like, I think that's a great tale of, well, for one, I tend to agree with you when it comes to like the challenges and the buildup and stuff. I think that can be really cool, but I think it has to be very planned out. And I think it tends to work better with artists that already have a following because if you just start dropping stuff and you're telling people to pre-save it, I don't think that that's going to work if you don't have anybody paying attention to you. I think it could work well for artists that have a following to start. But if you're starting from ground zero and you wanted to tease something that's not out, I think your narrative needs to be a little bit different. You need to put a bit of a spin around like why you're even sharing this. Is there is there some reason to it? It's like, you know, did somebody not believe in you? Could you not sing a year ago and you took voice lessons and suddenly turned into like this crazy vocalist? I think there's a lot of sort of story that you need to put behind it if you want to take like a build up sort of narrative before a release and you don't have a fan base. That's the kind of thing where like, you know, it's just a matter of testing and figuring out like, well, what's interesting about this or what can I make interesting about this? What kind of stories can I tell about this? I think that's the kind of thing that can work well. But man, that's such a, I, I totally forgot about that. And that's such a great story as like an example of you guys just moving fast and being like, okay, this is popping off on social. We got to do something about it. So let's go. And I think that that kind of nicely sums up everything that we talked about on this episode is just like be willing to experiment you know there aren't necessarily rules in a lot of these cases there's research you can do there are best practices that you can take from your own experience there's best practices that you can take by looking at what other successful artists or creatives are doing on different platforms whether it's tiktok whether it's reels whether it's how they're engaging on ig stories you can even look at like podcasters for example or like you know, filmmakers or comedians on, on YouTube, like look at, you know, Joe Rogan is very in the news right now. Look at Joe Rogan. Like he has YouTube channels that are just specifically clips, like video clips from his episodes, short chunk down versions. That's something that you could be doing with your live streams. We do it with creative juice, you know, where we've got clips of it kind of all over our socials based on the, the hot takes that you and I say, I guess, but that's the kind of stuff that you can do. So this doesn't just necessarily only apply to your badass music content. It can also apply to your live streams. It can apply to a lot of the stuff that you do. It just takes a bit of creativity and pivoting around and figuring out, you know, what works for me? What can I learn from the things that I've done before? What can I learn from other people? What's going viral right now and what's trending? And I think that kind of gives you the lay of the land of how to start from like, you know, very top level. It's like create great content And it can be, you know, create great long form content, figure out ways to chop it up, find the sections that are most impactful to people, start posting it, find different ways of saying things, creating engaging stories around that content, and then kind of rinse, lather and repeat. Yeah, well said. Like I said, I understand that what Jack just outlined and what we've outlined this whole episode about like, how do you make one piece of content into more content? It's not an overnight thing. It's not really like a hack of like, oh, here's how you make your video into 25 videos in in an hour, right? It's a holistic process of like, here's how you stretch this video out and make it last and work for you. And like I said, so listen to this, listen to especially the last 45 seconds that Jack just really nicely summarized everything. And that will give you the overview. And from there, figure out where you are and then just attack that. If you're interested in it, attack it and, and start posting, experimenting, and whatever. And it's a really great way to kind of be active, get familiar, and ultimately repurpose one piece of content into a bunch. And you know, to to kind of close off here, I want to preface by also saying, you don't need to be a ridiculous video editor or a video editing whiz or have access to a bunch of expensive tools, you know, and video editing software. You can do a lot of this in really simple tools. You know, you mentioned Canva, Ed, which is great. Canva is a great tool. Using the SnapTik app to download your videos from TikTok, using the InShot app to make stitched videos or adding text layovers on your vertical videos. InShot is a great app. We'll link to that in the show notes too. But all of these are super cheap or free, (laughs) really. And it doesn't require a lot of extra work or a lot of figuring out. Certainly you can use things like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro and create templates for yourself to do this. And that can make it quicker for you if you're comfortable in those kind of things, but you don't need to. And so that's just, I, I think kind of like a final sort of 
point to say that anybody can do this. It just starts with putting together a great piece of content and really brainstorming, you know, what the right song is. I hate to go back to the song, but it's so important. And I just want to stress that. So I think that that's a great sort of way to, to close things off here. Yeah. And just to underline what Jack said, like to give that some validity, I have zero video editing ability or skill, and I strictly use Canva and a thing to rip videos off YouTube for our own videos sometimes. So you do not have to be a good video editor to absorb the content and get the $12.95 a month Canva subscription and do everything we talked about. So don't let that be a barrier for sure. Hell yeah, for sure. Well, this has been awesome. I hope you guys take this and look critically at the content that you've created, the stuff that you're working on and figure out where does this apply across my social presence, across my ecosystem, across my audiences, and how can I use little bits and pieces of the content that I create to pull people in in different ways. So dig into it. We'll see you guys next time on Creative Juice. Peace out, Indies. Let's go.